Hello everyone. In the course of environmental management system, in today's lesson, we are going to discuss about the scope of ISO 14001-2015 standard. ISO 14000-2015 standard can be used as the guidelines or a framework for implementation of environmental management system in any organization. So, this lesson is been designed with an objective of to understand the scope of ISO 14001-2015 for EMS implementation. The contents of this session are history of ISO 14001-2015, this international standard. Then we are going to discuss about the scope of ISO 14001-2015 and we are going to discuss about the different elements or the requirements of ISO 14001-2015. The history of ISO 14001-2015 standard. As in the previous sessions, we had discussed that ISO, it is an international organization for standardization which develops the international standard in different domains. So, it was established in year 1947 and till now it has published about 22,000 different international standard. So, in year 1996, British standard 7750 was been referred as the standard for implementation of environmental management system in the organization. Although, it is not a single standard or a reference with reference to which an EMS can be implemented in any organization. However, this British standard 7750 was been adopted under ISO with the name of ISO 14001. When the nomenclature of international standard is given, the number specifies a particular area. So, this 14000, it indicates the standards which are given for environmental management. The number is given as 14001, which indicates it is a certification standard for implementation of environmental management system in any organization the requirements which are to be fulfilled, those are given under this ISO 14001 standard. So, in 1996, this standard was firstly adopted under ISO and its name was changed as ISO 14001. Thus, the first standard under ISO related to environmental management was introduced in year 1996 and it was named as ISO 14001 to 1996 as the first edition. Now, over a period of time, changes are expected under these ISO standards as well. The changes are made in response to the changing scenario in the field. Over a period of time, the market requirements go on changing and in response to these requirements in the market, in the field, the changes are also done in these ISO standards. So, the first revision that was made in year 2004, so the second edition of this standard was published in year 2004. Further, this 
next to 2004 time, again the need was identified to have this upgradation or changes in response to the market need. So, the third edition that was developed in the year 2015. So, at present, the current version of ISO 14001, which is followed and which is been implemented for many organization is ISO 14001-2015. Now, let us understand what is the scope of ISO 14001-2015. The scope indicates how we can use this international standard ISO 14001-2015 for implementation of environmental management system. So, this ISO 14001-2015 standard essentially provides the requirements. It does provide the guidelines, it does provides the, the framework and it helps the organization for implementation of environmental management system. Now, what is the aim of implementation of environmental management system in any organization? Organization aims for enhancing the environmental performance. For this sake, environmental management system implementation is very beneficial. So, this standard actually aids for the organization to achieve the intended outcomes of the environmental management system. Intended outcomes of the organization are basically the different objectives which are to be achieved under environmental management system. In general, organization declares a policy related to environmental management. It is called as environmental policy. Under this environmental policy, different objectives are stated, which are nothing but organization's intended performance towards environmental management. This standard can be used by any organization. Let it be a manufacturing organization, let it be a management organization, it could be a, a very small organization or it could be group of organizations. It is regardless of its size, the type and nature, any organization can go for implementation of environmental management system. And it applies to the environmental aspects of that organization. Environmental aspects of the organization are nothing but its activities, products or services which do interact with the environment. So, these environmental aspects of the organization could be any of the activity of the organization which is interacting with the environment, the products which are manufactured, which are created in that organization or the services which are provided by that organization. The environmental aspect is the word which is used, which indicates the interaction of these elements that is activities, products and services with the environment, which bring certain change to the environment. Those are called as environmental aspects. So, these aspects are basically identified by the organization itself. So, which aspects are considered as environmental aspects? The organization when it determines and such aspects that the organization can either control or influence, which are in the purview of organization where the control is possible for these activities, products and services of the organization that is what is called as under the control of the organization or organization is able to create influence upon the use of that product, 
upon the carrying of that activity or upon provision of that service. All these things, the management of environmental aspects in order to improve the environmental performance is carried out with a very well known approach that is called as life cycle perspective. Life cycle perspective takes into account all the stages of either that product or activity starting from say the, the cradle to grave approach means if we talk about any product for formation of that product what raw materials are used, how these raw materials are used for the different processes under different processes and how that product goes through these different stages till it is been used and disposed of by the consumer. So, this life cycle perspective takes into account all the stages, all the processes which do happen for a product. A similar approach can be followed for the activity as well as the service. The standard does not provide any specific environmental performance criteria. This is a peculiar characteristic of this standard. Standard does provide the guidelines, standard does provide a framework for achieving the environmental performance, but the extent to which environmental performance is to be achieved, the ways with which environmental performance is to be achieved is decided by the organization itself. The standard can be used by the organization in whole. So, the standard requirements can be made applicable to the entire organization or it can be made applicable to a part of organization. And this standard or its guidelines or its requirements can be used for improving the environmental performance systematically. That is the aim of this environmental management system standard. Now, let us discuss about the elements of this ISO 14001-2015. When we say any document and its element, so those are specified with these elements. When we refer to ISO 14001-2015 standard, the requirements of this standard are being specified with different elements. Those elements are listed out over here. So, the first indicates the scope of environmental management system or the scope of this standard. The second part is the normative references. When this standard is created, what were the references taken for making of the standard? Those are specified under this point. The different terms which are used in the context of environmental management system, those are specified, those are defined with the examples under this section. Fourth part that is the context of organization, it gives the scope of the organization along with the different elements which need to be considered while deciding the scope of this environmental management system. For any organization, the involvement of leaders for the execution of any management system is very essential. So, the requirements of the top management for that organization for the implementation of environmental management system are specified under the fifth clause that is leadership. Then the main basis based on which the requirements of this international standard are being classified, these are given under these elements as planning, support and operation, then performance evaluation and improvement. These elements are based on 
the famous approach which is called as PDCA approach. So, these were the elements of the ISO 40001-2015. So, thank you very much for this session.